Today we're going on another trip and we're going to Rothbury and in particular the Simonside Hills. On the last trip, which was to Hexham Common in search of the Lynburn Falls, um, I got slightly lost, a bit disoriented in the hills. So at that point I thought my orienteering skills need to be improved. So for this walk, it, this is a good test, you see, because I know the walk, I've done it before. Uh, but what I'm going to do is plot it with a compass on a map and then when I get there and start the walk, although I do know the path and I'm familiar with it, I'll be able to check the compass bearings and make sure that I'm actually doing the orienteering correctly. So I have my points and bearings written down. I'll take the map and I'll take the compass. And as it's turning to October now, middle of October, um, we're going to have to take a little bit more stuff in the backpack. We're going to have to take some waterproofs, I think. It may rain up there. Um, take a little bit more grub and obviously all of the camera gear. So we're going to get the backpack uh, sorted out, get some appropriate clothing on and then off to the hills. And here we are. We've made it to uh, the car park at Simonside here up in Rothbury and <sighs> the trees are fantastic. Um, right, I'm going to get my boots on and then we are going to head this away into the hills. <laughs> visitor board thing here which looks interesting and we are here and I believe that this path is the one that we should take but we should check the compass bearing shouldn't we 280 degrees now I've got it set for 280 degrees and if I stand with that north that would seem to be correct so up this path. Birds are singing in the trees and it's a beautiful sunny day actually uh, for October, October the 15th I believe it is today. Um, but we have an uphill path here and all around us these marvellous trees. continues up quite steeply for a while and then it levels out and then we should hit that fork in the road of this first path starting to level out a little but quite a climb very steep to begin with so we've got the blood pumping already now we can see what's around this corner there are a couple of things to look at on the way here and we'll obviously stop and take a look at them just off the side of the path here we're in the most beautiful open countryside through these trees you can see them temperature has really dropped over the last couple of days. Uh, back in the van I think it was reading about 8 degrees up here. Um, but still it's a beautiful day, it's very nice and sunny. But you can feel that sharpness in the air. in the distance over there. That's the destination for today. It looks splendid. I don't know. The sun's very bright on it, so I don't know if we're going to get any good footage until we get to a different sort of place, different um, position here. But uh, it sure does look like a mighty crag. Now our next compass bearing was taken from a fork in the path. And here we have a fork in the path. So I've set the compass, this was to 204 degrees. And again, if I get that lined up north, 
can see, there it is. Get that lined up north. It's this way. We're on the right path. This looks like it's going to be another bit of a climb up here all the way. Um, I remember this path, I think, from the last time I did this walk, which was many years ago. And it's sort of a culvert, it sort of goes between, not exactly a gorge, but it does have rocks on either side of it. So we're just going to take it easy up there, and then we should end up on a, another path, which will take us to the base of the crags, and from there, it's climbing all the way. But I've got to say, if I shut up for just a moment, this is the most uh, quiet, tranquil place. A couple of little birds in the distance, but that's all. No wind today as well. Bonus. <laughs> Uh, what looked like an old riverbed. The uh, countryside is really opening up. excellent painting material. I do like to do landscape painting now and again. And that's definitely a landscape. I'm sure there'll be lots of little shots throughout this uh, video, which I'll be able to use uh, to make some nice paintings, hopefully. Almost up the first part, I think. Still looks a little underexposed for the crag there. There's actually some people on the top of it. So I've got a route over there, which is the more shallow route, which I'll take up and see if I can get onto the top of it myself. I'd like to get some nice footage of it beforehand though. Um, it's just, the sun is behind it right now. It's making it quite difficult. Just a little bit more on the orienteering. Um, the point that I got was to go up the side of this crag here, which is there, from this path would be a bearing of 78 degrees. So if we put it 78 degrees, put it north, that seems to be heading in the right direction. It's just there's a minor path here, I think, which will take us to the actual foot of the crag. So this is what we're going to do now. This is, um, again, this all looks like a riverbed to me. But temperature's dropping as well, I feel it, as we ascend. But I think we're going to get the most spectacular views at the top of here. Um, this will go right over Rothbury uh, in the Cheviot Hills. Um, nothing but excellent views on both sides. So I'm going to switch this camera off for a little while and take it easy as I go up this uh, path. Looks like it could be a bit treacherous.
now definitely time for a bite to eat. Just approaching, or climbing actually, the uh, second one of the two here. This is, again, much more um, prehistoric looking. Look at these rocks. That looks like a hippopotamus, actually. That's a solid piece of landscape. Absolutely. We're going to continue up this path, get to the top of here, and then we'll have something to eat. I didn't get to eat earlier. I saw the path and thought, well, I'll just take a little look down there. And again, it ended up in another half mile or so. So when we get to the top of here, which we nearly have, we will eat. OK, we're at the top of the second one. I think I found the perfect pasty spot. Brought some pasties today from Greg's. And it looks like an excellent little uh, nook down there, just out of the wind. It's not really what you would call windy, but there's a breeze. So um, I'm going to get behind there and have a pasty. The view up here, to say it's breathtaking, is an understatement. So from here it looks like we're following this path um, beyond our distance. Looks like it's going a little bit off piece, but still we'll take it. And we're down to from here. I'm just got a bearing of where I actually am. <laughs> it's always a good idea. But we're right up on the top of this um, crag here. Looking right down in you can see uh, Rothbury in the distance. And the forest is there. So I'm assuming that as we go over a couple of more of these ridges, we'll get to a point where we see the corner of the forest. Then we'll make our way back down to the car park. It's absolutely beautiful here. The sun's come out, there's very little wind, temperatures actually come up a little bit, and this whole scenery and everything is spectacular. Uh, this is really worth a walk. This is um, good stuff. I'm tempted to try to take that path down there actually. There's, um, looks like a bit of a scramble path down here. There's a more marked path across the uh, across the moorland there. Um, I'll follow the marked path. The feel of the terrain has really changed at this point. It's a bit more closed in. But we're heading to, I think, the final crag on this particular walk. And from there we should see our route back down. But this has been a marvellous walk. Um, it's quite a distance, I think it's about four and a half, possibly five miles round walk. And it is up and down a bit. But it's been very good. Now, can I just say, if you like this type of uh, video, these types of walks do consider subscribing to the channel uh, giving the video a like um, it helps in many ways and you'll be first in the queue to see new videos as they come out so thank you I've got about 447 feet up here sorry 447 meters above sea level and can you see that behind me If you like the open vistas, this has certainly got some. So the path goes down at this point and uh, back into the forest. But that is the Cheviot in the background, the Cheviot Hills. Such a beautiful calm day. So almost back into the forest here. Um, just one last look at these uh, crags and tors before 
we head into the forest, um, I missed out on the last compass bearing as well. Wasn't really paying attention. But I've noticed that uh, there was a few people up on the top there and they've come this way. <laughs> I'm assuming they know where they're going. So I'll just tag along, I'll just follow them and see uh, if this leads back to the car park. I think it does, I'm, I'm fairly confident that it does. But this is just leading into a little um, Christmas tree wood by the looks of it. And there's some walks planned for the Cheviot. There's uh, obviously the Cheviot and the Cheviot Hills, there's a massive area. There's the Cheviot itself, but the surrounding area, um, Hot Thob Valley is it? And, oh, what's the other one called? Um, Beamish, I think Beamish Valley, uh, Hot Thob Valley, and there's a few waterfalls there, which I'm, again I've never seen, but they're apparently spectacular waterfalls on the far side of the Cheviot. Very difficult to get to by car, quite an expedition, but very much worth it. So in the coming weeks, uh, if the weather is with us, we'll try some walks up into the Cheviot and see if we can find the waterfalls up there. I think that'll be a spectacular day. I'm here running water down there, but I don't see the burn. I think it's all covered up with the... Um, ferns and things at this point. We've well, certainly come down into thicker woodland here I think. Joe's Wood apparently this is called. Uh, there was a little board up there saying this way to Joe's Wood. So this must be Joe's Wood. Uh, it looks very nice. Uh, big limbs of the trees uh, coming out. I just wonder if there's a path that goes through it. This is a little bit wide. I mean it's a, it's a forest path but uh, a little footpath through the woods would be pleasant to finish this off. Ask and he shall be given. just going down 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 here through Joe's Wood. Um, very steep uh, decline. And I'm still looking for the burn. Oh, I can just see it there. I can see a little bit of it there. This path here, which comes through the uh, main woods, There's a, there was a path which skirted it all the way around, but this one comes through the woods. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, van's just over this way. tour. Um, this is a conversion which I did myself not that long ago really in the springtime uh, but I never really did a van tour of it. I certainly didn't video any of the construction just in case it went horribly wrong but um, it's turned out very well actually. So van tour coming up. That was a really good walk. I enjoyed it a lot. As I say what I've done before many many years ago I think I must have first done this when I was about 30 years old. Younger maybe. Uh, did it a few times with my daughter and friends. And it's really nice to come back and take a look at it again uh, many years later. It's still as stunning as it ever was. Um, now, I must say, if you like the video, 
If you've enjoyed watching, uh, do subscribe to the channel. There'll be many more of these videos. As I was saying earlier, we may go up to the Cheviot Hills next and take a look around there. Or oh, may do a couple of, uh, a two day um, extravaganza in the, um, in the Cheviot because there's so much of it and it's all absolutely beautiful. So we may do that in the near future. We'll see how the weather goes. Obviously this is um, October now, so the weather will be cutting in a little bit. Um, but as I say, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, press the subscribe button, press the bell, and we'll hear many more. So until the next one, thank you.